Hi everyone, it's Chris here from OPMC and in this video today I'm going to dive a bit deeper into our journey of creating plugins for WooCommerce and just introduce you to some ideas which I think will help you in your journey. So let's dive in. Well, the first place we have to start here is WooCommerce and making plugins and how are we actually going to do it. If you're looking at starting your own WooCommerce plugins business, there are a number of different approaches you can take. But what I'm really interested in telling you about is how to make a successful plugin. Nothing is ever a sure bet. You can bet the world on something, an idea, and it totally tanks or you can invest a very small amount of money and magically it takes off. So you don't always know until you start getting it in front of people, start to build a reputation and see how that tracks. So, you know, I think that there are a lot of parts to this. So with regards to, well, just speaking from personal experience and just to be clear, I'm a marketer myself, I'm not a developer. And so my viewpoint is a bit different from perhaps a developer's perspective. So it's really focused on good products and products that are gonna be easily marketable, the people are gonna understand. So where do we start? Well, first of all, for me personally, it starts with an idea or an inkling or I see something somewhere or I see something that someone else is doing and it gives me an idea about something that we could create ourselves. So uh, a lot of that for me comes through Facebook advertising as you, I'm sure, are the same. If you are connected in Facebook, you will get a lot of advertising on Facebook, you'll see a lot of things and often that's where the spark comes for me is just browsing the web and seeing what people are talking about, seeing what they're asking for and it's not looking at plugins that are for sale but just understanding where the market is and where it's headed. So for us we have had products that have done really well we have had products that haven't done as well and so it can be end up being a bit of a mixed bag we have found that you know certain aspects of a product have really influenced its sales for example we had a product that was quite expensive relatively speaking and when we reduced the price we found that suddenly it took off in terms of sales and so that was a good lesson for us that pricing is really important. But in terms of where things start, for me, the plugins start with an idea. The other way that it comes to me is that I am, maybe I have an inkling about something or I'm reviewing data because we create and review a lot of data ourselves and it helps us get a good understanding of the marketplace. So I, I would ask you, what is your idea? What is your inkling? What is your hunch? And roll with that because it doesn't cost anything to look into an idea, right? You might want to, in fact, start with a free plugin rather than go straight into a paid plugin. But think about the fact that motivation for plugin development can come from many different sources. So don't be limiting yourself in a certain direction to find your ideas. I think then when I have that idea, then I want to be able to validate it as well because it's and quantify the potential marketplace. Now, quantifying the potential marketplace, you don't have to be looking at the maximum number of people. So it doesn't have to be that you need to only go with ideas that other people already have 100,000 or a million customers, okay? It's really gonna be up to how many sales you can do, which is going to determine the importance of it. So perhaps what I mean by that is, if your product has a limited marketplace, which is steadily growing over time, but it's not suited for everyone, it's a, say more of a niche market, that's also a big opportunity because let's say your plugin was a starting point, the first plugin you w want to make is going to have a limited marketplace of say under a thousand potential customers. Well, you can still sustain a plugin on those kind of numbers. Uh, depending on your pricing. So I think it's important to 
not discount things which are not going to have a super wide appeal because there may already be very dominant players in that marketplace who have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of customers already and a well-established product and a well-established place in the marketplace. So, you know, anything that you create will be compared to much more sophisticated products which are at a similar price point. So perhaps you don't want to go into the market with something which is half-baked or has 10% of the features of other competitors' products when you need to give it a price which is perhaps similar or slightly less than what they're currently offering. Because ultimately they'll come to you, they'll get the product, they'll realize it isn't quite suitable for them and they're gonna want to get a refund because it doesn't do what they expected. They may buy it on faith, but then they may want to refund because it just there's just too many, too many challenges for them. It's too hard, doesn't do what they expected and so on and so forth. With that said, there are opportunities in the market to create add-ons to existing plugins. There's risks to that, but maybe you find a niche market for an existing product which is really popular where they don't have a certain feature which you suspect it's not going to be something that they are going to offer in the near future. And if you suspect that they're not going to offer it in the near future or you find on their forums that they're saying, you know, it's a future potential feature, but we're not going to offer it now, that's also a, an opportunity. So opportunities abound. Uh, I'm definitely an optimist and I'm a marketing person. I'm an ideas person. So the ideas flow pretty easily and they may not flow as well for you. But what you need to look at is the market do your research, see what other people are doing, and then take it from there. Now, skipping over a whole bunch of details here, we then need to look at our MVP, our minimum viable product, which is going to be the product that you launch. Now, in my experience, I've found that creating a minimum viable product is fine as a starting point, but you need to then be able to quickly take on customer feedback and make changes and improvements and upgrade and add new features promptly after that. So one of the lessons that I've learned about MVPs is an MVP also has to be good. It cannot be poor when it's launched. It cannot be something which is not that great. It's got to have some value that people are willing to pay for where they can see the future direction of the product and they know that it's you know something that they want to invest in ongoing. I think that's really important. So the MVP launch, uh, forgetting about all the or everything that goes into creating a plugin and launching it needs to be something which is of a high standard from the get-go and it's got to have at least one key feature which is going to be highly valuable for customers and it doesn't hurt to put out a roadmap on your web page about the features that you're looking to add in the near future and it doesn't hurt to be more attentive to your first customers and add features that you can see that they're really asking for because if you can make them love your product and be advocates for your product then they're going to tell other people about it right give it a great review tell other people and you put a lot more effort into that first customers and you put a lot more effort into those first customers but it will pay off in terms of building a reputation for your services. So as part of the process of creating your MVP, you also want to be looking at where you're going to sell it. So the logical place which first comes up would be to sell it on your website, but also you need to look at exposure. So your website doesn't have a lot of people who are already coming to it looking for plugin products, most likely no. Other established marketplaces are going to be your best bet as a starting point because they are gonna allow you to get in front of people even though it may be a slow start to that process. Uh, it's definitely, I think, the best way to get in front of people. 
Another way that you are going to get in front of people is if the plugin that you're creating is designed to provide a value add to your existing customer base. So for example, if you already offer a service to your existing customer base and this plugin helps that customer base, then and you know you've got hundreds and or thousands of customers, then you know you can put it to them first and use them as a test bed and sell it to them. But certainly if you are not in the fortunate position to have an established customer customer base of people who want the product which you are going to be creating, I think then definitely the first place to go is to a marketplace where you can get that exposure. It's not guaranteed exposure, uh, but it's, it's a good place to start, I think the best best option for most people. Now, when you're looking at that those marketplaces, you probably want to be looking at, at what aligns with your business and the product that you're selling, the suitability of that marketplace for that. And you won't, will need to apply for a vendor or partnership or marketplace account with those companies because that in itself can take some time. So becoming a partner uh, is one thing and getting approval to be creating plugins and selling them on that marketplace. You need to look at the terms to see if you can only sell on that marketplace or you can sell on multiple marketplaces because that's another big thing. And then following on from that you also need to be looking at the actual application process to submit a plugin and get it approved because for first timers, that can be a big challenge. Getting your plugin approved on a marketplace, especially one where you're gonna be charging, is <laughs> can be challenging. First time on a marketplace, you learn a lot of things, but it can take a long time. And so you don't wanna be in a position where you are You've created the product, you've spent months in development perhaps, and then you want to go launch it and you find that it's an incredibly long process and you weren't expecting that was going to happen and it delays your launches that you were planning to do by months, which is going to suck big time, right? So really thinking ahead on the steps of what is the barriers between you creating the plugin and launching it and getting it live on a marketplace. If you understand all the steps involved and benefit of hindsight, you know, you may not know what all of those are. You may not know what all the pitfalls and barriers are gonna be before you start that process. But learning from people like me and other people in the space, I think is incredibly important before you dive into that. And certainly I know that we have had challenges in that space in the past and we learned from it and you just need to be prepared is the main point. Now there are different marketplaces and different, different approaches that you can take. So uh, one of the marketplaces that we're big on is WooCommerce.com. WooCommerce has a process, you've got to learn it and understand it and be accepted as a third party developer before you can uh, submit any products and there is a submission process so if you're a developer and you're not good at words you need to be thinking about that because you need to prepare a lot of content you need to have documentation you need to have a product page you need to have a submission document which uh, well sorry there's a submission form which is multiple parts and you really need to understand what the product is that you're selling and what the value is that you're offering to customers because if people are buying this thing they have gotta be presented with something which is gonna be appealing, but also for the marketplace, they've gotta decide whether it's something that they wanna sell, okay? So if it's not something which is amazing for them or something which they think the market is saturated, they're not going to accept it. So some probing and initial relationship building there at the start can be really crucial and valuable for that to be smooth as possible. Now, after you have successfully launched on a marketplace, you want to look at making improvements. You need to have a support structure in place for your service. Uh, we have acquired businesses before and acquired plugins before, and we know that one of the challenges that some of those people that we've required from had is around customer support. You may be really great at providing plugins, creating plugins. You may know exactly what you want to make and how to make it and you're really good at that, adding features. But as you start to build up a reputation and as you start to build up a customer base, people are going to want to support. And you need to have a support structure in place. 
you need to be aware that there's a range of different customers using your plugin and some of them are going to get to step one and be asking questions. They might say, you know, your plugin, but it says I need to have WordPress. Can you tell me what to do? Or you may have developers who are very technically savvy who pull apart your code and tell you everything that's wrong with it. So there's a range of customers out there and you've got to be prepared for anything, any sort of question that may come up. Having thousands of customers for our plugins, we know that there are so many different customer types out there and you need to be able to be ready to know how to approach that as a general point, know that there's going to be different skill levels involved and they may also have different expectations from what you're offering. So for example, they may think that you're going to be their web developer and help you every step of the way with your host, with their hosting and with their website set up and all centered around your plugin. So you've got to decide what that line in the sand is for customer support what you're gonna do what you're not gonna do I think that that's really important part of the big part of the customer support is when your product is new I would be focusing on those customers and focusing on adding features to begin with that they're asking for because they are your essentially your sounding board they've bought your product they are using it they may be very proactive in giving you ideas and it's very important that you make them heard because they are going to be your biggest advocate potentially ongoing. So something to really think about is that now as you release new versions you become more familiar with the process of releases and setting customer expectations and delivering things that customers want dealing with the challenges of building a plugin, you can then expand into other areas such as expanding your portfolio of plugins, but you definitely need to know about a lot of things and I hope to cover those in future videos. So if you like this video, please, please, please give it the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, please give it the thumbs down and tell us why and we want to make some useful content for you and if you would like to be notified when new videos come out from us we're working really hard on new content then please use the bell icon to subscribe to our channel it does mean a lot it helps with the youtube algorithm which means that we are encouraged to make more useful content for you and if you have any ideas for topics you'd like us to cover please let me know. Well, that's all from me for this time and I look forward to bringing you another video in the near future. Cheers and thank you for watching.